Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to Verbling. Hi there. I'm Teacher Oakley. And we're going to continue today as we did yesterday at this time talking about different sentence structures. Yesterday we talked about and practiced forming simple sentences or independent clauses. Today we're going to combine independent clauses or simple sentences to make compound sentences. Okay. Yes, it gets a little bit more complex every day. Oh, tomorrow, complex sentences. Woo. Okay, uh, we're going to examine these forms, talk about them a little bit, and then you guys are going to practice forming your own sentences. Uh, again, today, compound sentences. Hello again, Carolina. You're back for more. Yeah, hi, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, nice to see you again. Thank you. Um, hello, Heidi. Good morning. Hello. Nice to see you again. Uh, likewise. Good morning to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess really early good morning to Gregory. Yes. Hello. Must be very early where you are. Always. Only this Always. time. <laughs> okay. You're an early riser. You're an early bird. Early bird, yeah. Yeah. The early bird catches the worm. Uh, I'm a late bird. <laughs> okay. Welcome, Gregory. Nice to see you. Nice to see uh, you, too. Okay. And um, hello, Nora. Hi. Hi, Nora. You? I'm good. Nice to see you again. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all right, let's explore compound sentences and how they're formed, and then we'll practice a little bit. All right, let me pop a little screen share up here for you. Uh, okay, actually, there are three ways that a compound sentence is formed. A compound sentence, most importantly, has two independent clauses, or AKA, also known as simple sentences. Of course, as we learned yesterday, an independent clause or simple sentence must have a subject, a verb, and it must make sense all by itself. Uh, okay, so a compound sentence is simply two of these structures joined. How are they joined? Uh, a, B, or C with what is called a coordinating conjunctions. There are seven of them, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. For your... Uh, so you can remember them, here is a mnemonic device. If you use uh, the starting letter of all these coordinating conjunctions as kind of an acronym, it would spell fanboys. F-A-N-B-O-Y-S. Fanboys, those are your coordinating conjunctions which you can use to join two independent clauses. You can also use a conjunctive adverb, um, such as however and therefore. All right, more on that later. We'll get into that later. We're going to look at these one at a time, these different constructions. Or C, um, sometimes you will see two independent clauses joined simply by a semicolon after the first clause. And then you will see another clause. You usually see this semicolon construction when you actually build a compound sentence with three independent clauses. And yes, that's possible. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, but... Uh, it is possible to have more than one 
um, sorry, more than two independent clauses. And that's where you often would see a semicolon used. Okay, let's talk about good old fanboys first. Uh, okay, hang on. We're going to go zip back up to the top. Okay, look at some examples. Um, all right. Ooh, what happened here? Weird. Hmm. Something, something occurred here. I if I can fix this. Okay. Uh, okay, here's some examples. Hmm, weird. Uh, okay. These three examples, the uh, subjects, and notice, of course, there are two subjects or subject noun. Subject, of course, is always a noun, are yellow. Obviously, there are two because we're connecting two independent clauses. Uh, the subjects are highlighted in yellow. The verbs are highlighted in green. And, of course, there are two because there are two independent clauses and you need a subject and a verb for each independent clause. And the um, coordinators, uh, the fanboys, are highlighted in red. The things that, the words that join the two independent clauses. So, uh, very simple. Um, the verb in... in Example one is the same verb. I tried to speak English, and my friend tried to speak English. Whoops, I tried to speak Spanish, and my friend tried to speak English. Um, okay, it, that's perfectly fine. You will even see cases where um, someone may construct a compound sentence using the same uh, subject noun. That's also quite possible. It could have the same action or the same verb, quite possible, or they could both be different. Like in example number two, Alejandro played football, so Maria went shopping. Or number three, Alejandro played football for Maria went shopping. Okay. Uh, before we practice, I need to talk about just a second um, number two and three. Okay. Uh, number two and three are, uh, you need to notice that, for example, oh, my, my page here is doing some awfully weird things. I don't know why. Okay. Number two and three, if you can see them, you can see them doubly now. Uh, the sentences are the same, but the coordinators are, have changed, so they, it changes the meaning. In two, Alejandro played football, so Maria went shopping. Obviously, this indicates Maria went shopping basically as a result. Alejandro played football first. That was the first action. Even though they are both in uh, a simple present tense. Oops, no, they're in simple past. I'm sorry, they're both in simple past tense, we can tell which action happened before the other. All right, because the coordinator indicates that. In sentence three, Alejandro played football for Maria went shopping. Okay, Maria went shopping, and then Alejandro played football. This is grammatically correct. Number three, it's a little weird. Um, most normal English speakers would probably use uh, a different different subordinator. For example, I would probably normally say Alejandro played football because Maria went shopping. This, uh, with four as a coordinator, this is grammatically correct, and um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually probably just a little bit more formal, and you might see this kind of compound sentence with four used in writing for example, more often than you would in speaking. In speaking, you would probably use because and make a complex sentence. But there's nothing wrong with it, grammatically speaking. It's perfectly perfectly okay. Um, okay. 
Something weird happening to my, uh, okay, happening to my, my document here. All right, let's, uh, let's try that, actually, making um, uh, a simple, making a simple compound sentence using a coordinator. All right, here's an example. I love conjunctive adverbs, but my students love each other. Okay, here we're using but. Remember, all of, uh, we're going to try forming them using the coordinator's fanboys. All right, let's give it a shot. Carolina, you were first in the class. Yeah. Okay, give it a try. Uh, what structure? One, two, or three? Oh, they are all the same, actually. Okay. Um, one, two, and three are actually all the same. You're using the mm -hmm. the key is what we're trying to do is connect two independent clauses using uh, fanboys for and nor but or yet or so. Ah, okay, okay. Pick your own. Um, Carlos went to the movies and Maria got out for dinner. Okay. Carlos went to the movies and okay. Well, uh, Carlos went to the movies. All right. And Maria go out. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> For dinner. Okay. Um, there is a problem here. Besides uh, the fact that I forgot to capitalize Maria. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, besides that, what is the problem here? Carolina, can you when see? Went out. Went out. Ah, for dinner. Right. Yeah. All right, it's awkward. Uh, what is going on? I'm having major problems here with my document. Carlos went to the movies and Maria went out for dinner. Now we're okay. It's... it's um. Very awkward when we're, we can't really, especially with, okay, this is important actually, especially with compound sentences, um, because we're comparing two ideas, uh, it would be very, um, especially with and, okay, depends on the coordinator, with and, it would be very awkward to have two different verb tenses. Um, Actually, with any of the coordinators, uh, it's possible to change verb tenses. For example, maybe uh, Carlos went to the movie. Okay, maybe if we change this to so Maria is going out for dinner. Whoops. So Maria is going out for dinner. Okay, that's possible. Okay. But sometimes we have to be careful about the verb tenses when we're connecting two independent clauses. Uh, Gregory, you want to try to give me an example of a compound sentence using a coordinator? Fanboys. Okay. Jessica not prefer her homework in, in the evening, so she have to complete uh, this oh work God. in the morning. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Okay, let's see if I got all that. That was a mouthful there. So she... So have she to what? Complete. Had to. Have to complete. Yeah, okay. Your homework in the morning. Okay. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, okay, we, um, we have a little problem with the negative here. Not prefer. Um, can you see it, Gregory? Uh, 
This is not going to work. We need an auxiliary here. Can you see it? Can, it? can anybody see it? Okay. You need a little help with this verb. Uh, uh, or can I say without to do? Not prefer uh, her homework. Without to do. No. You're definitely going to need the infinitive to do here. We have to change the not prefer. Uh, I can do two things. Actually, I, I don't need I don't absolutely need a to have a... What is going on? I don't need... I could do it this way. Whoops. Why? I could say Jessica does not prefer to do her work in the evenings. Or I can do it another way. I can say Jessica prefers not to do her homework. I can, I, either of those constructions would be okay. But I have to do one or the other. Jessica prefers not to do her work in the evening. Um, okay. Yes. So that is an independent clause. We have our coordinator. So she had to complete her homework in the evening or in the morning. Sorry. She had to complete her homework in the morning. Okay. Another simple sentence, another independent clause. So with a little alteration there, this is this is in a compound sentence using a coordinator. Okay. I did it. <laughs> you did it. Very good. Awesome. Okay. Ludi, Ludi, Ludi. How are you? Hi, Ludi. Ludi, your turn. Uh, Alejandro was, watches the game soccer. Whoops. Watches. Every time you say watches, Ludi, I think you said washes. <laughs> I've got to hear the. Uh, I've got to hear the. Okay, what's the difference? Ch and sh. First of all, when we pronounce the sh sound, like ship and sheep, we tend to sh. We tend to drag it out a little more so that the listener can hear it. And when we say the ch sound, like watch, it first of all it's usually shorter because it uh, it's a glottal stop sound. It's a um, the sh sound is called a continuous sound because you can continue uh, the sh sound forever. It's continuous. The ch sound, however, you you can't do that. It's a quick uh, you can't. If you do that, if you continue the sound, then it's then it becomes a C, an sh sound. So it's a fast, quick stop sound. All right, with aspiration, with breathing out. Aspiration means a puff of air. Watch, watches. So it's quick. All right. Sorry, Ludi. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, Alejandro, what's the the game soccer? Are we watched or watches? Past tense? Okay. Mm. I heard watched. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. So, Maria... Cook the dinner. Okay. Couple of things here. Uh, it your basic sentence structure is in fact the compound sentence with a coordinator. Um, however, you know how nitpicky I am. Uh, okay. Uh, Alejandra watched the game soccer. All right. Actually, this is possible, but it's um, it's a little strange. 
So you're you're using uh, game as the adjective here, and then soccer. You probably, I think, what you most likely mean here is she watched the soccer game. Oh, my document has gone crazy here. I want her to watch the soccer game. All right, so <coughs> using soccer, because we usually say the basketball game, the soccer game, the football game, the tennis match. All right, so this should be reversed, which for some reason my document's not allowing me to do. So Maria cooked the dinner. Oh, okay, um, the article the here is not wrong. Uh, okay, you're specifying which dinner. I suppose it would. There's enough information to know that it was the dinner for Maria and Alejandro. So okay, it's okay. But it's also not really necessary. So Maria cooked dinner in general. All right, slight difference in meaning, and I guess it doesn't really matter, article or no article. Dinner in general. Okay. But, uh, okay, the idea of a compound sentence using the coordinators, we got it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right, these... Uh, these can be longer. All right, let's let's look at. Uh, hang on. Let's look. Go back to the three types of um, compound sentences and examples. Whoa, what is going on? My my document is just totally freaking out. Uh, okay. Looking at the examples here, A, B, C. Tom reads novels, but Jack reads comics. Uh, okay, notice the use of a comma here. Hmm. Uh, okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's never wrong to put a comma. Sometimes you, uh, you won't see a comma, which is okay in short sentences, but this is tricky. So using our coordinator fanboys, here, here it's but, uh, it's never wrong to put a comma. It is sometimes wrong to leave out the comma. Sometimes it's okay. So, in other words, basic rule of thumb, always use a comma and then you're always right. Uh, of, of course, you're talking about in writing. So, to separate the two uh, independent clauses, Using a coordinator, you can. You should basically just always use a comma, and then you know you can't be wrong. Uh, okay, conjunctive adverb, which we're going to talk about. Notice the punctuation here. Tom reads novels, and this is again always correct punctuation. Tom reads novels. Semicolon. However, our conjunctive adverb. Conjunctive means to join, our joining adverb. However, comma, Jack reads comics. Okay. And then a semicolon alone, Tom reads novels, semicolon, his friend reads comics. Again, this is going to be very rare for to use with two. A semicolon alone with just two independent clauses is very rare. You would almost never do that. Um... And when you're speaking, of course, if, you, if you're speaking and you're trying to use a semicolon alone, of course, it sounds like two simple sentences. Obviously, you could never tell the difference. Um, okay. Wow. So, uh, the punctuation patterns, independent clause, comma, coordinating conjunction, independent clause, uh, independent clause, semicolon, Conjunctive adverb, comma, independent clause, or independent clauses, two independent clauses with simply a semicolon. All right, so that's it for the punctuation. Let's talk a little bit about conjunctive adverbs. Uh, all right. 
This is the second way to form a compound sentence. A conjunctive adverb brings together two complete thoughts. Yeah, all right. Well, obviously, each clause can stand on its own, of course. First clause, again, followed by a semicolon. Um, as it says, sometimes there's a comma after the conjunctive adverb. Okay, in reality, it's always safe to do so. Some examples of conjunctive adverbs are here, also, anyway, besides. Notice, many of these can also be described as signal words or signal phrases or discourse markers. We have a lot of ways to describe conjunctive adverbs. The use of these conjunctive adverbs is very, very important in English. This is how we organize our speech. Frankly, if any of you are interested in um, taking an IELTS, TOEIC, TOEFL, CAE, or any of the other standardized uh, English tests, knowing how to use conjunctive adverbs is immensely important. Um, it is a must for any of these types of examinations. Uh, okay, so these conjunctive adverbs can be used in the way we're discussing today in compound sentences to join two independent clauses or two simple sentences together. Also, they can be used to introduce or signal information at the beginning of sentences. Uh, either way, how to, how to use these is extremely important. Again, here's some moreover. You see these, uh, nevertheless, on the other hand, you see the therefore, okay, these are signaling uh, types of information to come. What are you doing? Are you giving a result? Are you adding information? Are you sequencing? Next. Okay, for example, you use next, you mean, okay, this comes after this. Uh, therefore, okay, you're drawing a conclusion. Uh, these conjunctive adverbs always sh explain the purpose of the next thing you're going to say. So these are very, very important. Um, okay, so the function may be uh, addition, <clears throat> all right? In addition, moreover, also, uh, comparison, uh, all right, we may be using um, these, these types of adverbs to compare, also, likewise, similarly. Uh, sometimes to make a concession, granted, uh, of course, all right, uh, contrast, although, instead, regardless, or phrases like, on the other hand. Sometimes there are phrases, on the other hand is a conjunctive adverb phrase, okay. Uh, sometimes the emphasis is the function, indeed, of course, certainly. Uh, okay, uh, to illustrate with words, in other words, to give an example, like for example, namely, uh, for instance, is another one. Uh, they could summarize all in all, uh, in summary, in conclusion, finally, and they can be used to express uh, time, uh, time phrases or time uh, time adverbs, before, meanwhile, lately. Okay, let's see, let's look at some sentences and then we're going to practice. Uh, adverbial conjunctions or conjunctive adverbs, all right, well, pick your terminology, doesn't matter. Uh, here's what they do. Here's how they look in, in real sentences. And then we're gonna, we'll practice. I wanted to see <coughs> a scary movie. However, notice the punctuation. All right, semicolon. However, comma. However, my friend wanted to see a comma. Uh, see a comedy. 
see a comma. <laughs> All right. Again, 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 two independent clauses or two simple sentences joined. I wanted to see a scary movie. Has a subject, has a verb. It makes sense. My friend wanted to see a comedy. As a subject, my friend wanted a verb. It makes sense. All right. So, again, here we're making a compound sentences with two simple sentences, but now we're using one of these conjunctive adverbs. All right. Another example. You need to concentrate on your studies. Otherwise, you will fail the class. Uh, okay. Notice that there are definitely, um, definitely, uh, you have choices in many of these constructions. Uh, for example, do I want to use an adverb otherwise, or do I want to use one of my coordinators, my fanboys? You need to concentrate on your studies, or you will fail the class. Really says the same information. It's, the meaning, the context is no different whatsoever. I'm just making a choice to use a different way to connect the independent clauses. Uh, just the same, and the first one, I want to see a scary movie, but my friend wanted to see a comedy. Fine, I ch I'm choosing to use a coordinator instead of an adverb. All right. The thunder, okay, uh, third one here. The thunder and lightning were intense. Consequently, the crowd dispersed. All right. Uh, so, the crowd dispersed. Same thing. He enjoyed getting a new tie. Nevertheless, a sports car would have been a better gift. Okay, same thing, same thing, over and over again. Let's try this out. Okay, now we're going to try making a sentence, a compound sentence, by using sticking one of these conjunctive adverbs in the middle. Let's give it a shot. Uh, well, um, Gregory, I can't make Carolina go first every time. Why don't you give it a try? Uh, okay. Mm. Um, I try to uh, make a sentence, however, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it, it's an <laughs> example. Oh, that's great. Okay. All right, let's, let's see if I can squeeze it in here or if it'll mess up. Uh, I hmm, try to make a sentence. <coughs> However, I don't know what to say. Uh, yeah. Okay. Definitely the structure of the compound sentence using a uh, conjunctive adverb is definitely correct. Uh, problem with the first verb tense, though. Uh, I try. Um, need some help here. I try. Uh, uh, okay. I try to make it... Well, you have simple... The problem is you have simple present tense, which shows it's a regular thing, but this, you want to express this is a, what did you say? Maybe I trying. Yeah, okay, well, that's, that would work, however, you would need the verb to be to complete the, uh, I am, I am trying. Yeah, that would work. That means it's a one-time thing. I'm <laughs> trying to make a sentence, however, I don't know what to say. Or, uh, you know, you could use a future tense, too. Probably a simple future. I will try to make a sentence. However, I don't know what to say. I am going to try to make a sentence. Simple future or present continuous, yeah, would work better. And there you go. And that's a perfect example right there. Okay, very good. Uh, Lodi, 
care to give it a try. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Um, I like books. My son prefers comics, but I like books. My <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like we... books. All right. My son prefers comics. Um. Okay, but. Uh, let's throw in it. We need an adverb in here is what we're trying. No, there's nothing. Okay, for example. Ah, okay. Um, for example, that's okay, but we... Okay, now you're... Basically, the way I have to write what you said, I have to connect the two okay. uh, independent clauses with this semicolon. And this is grammatically correct, but this is very rare that you're actually going to see this written like this. This would be very okay. rare. Normally, uh, you would have a, an adverb in here. Um, maybe, um, and my son prefers comic, comics. Okay. I like books. And... <laughs> My son. My son prefer, prefers prefer. comics. Now you're doing, you're constructing a sentence, a compound sentence. This is also correct, but now you're using the first construction with the coordinator, fanboys, the coordinators, with and here. All right. What I'm trying to get you to do. <laughs> <coughs> What I'm trying to get you to do is actually uh, is actually instead of and all right use a semicolon and then an adverb like for example however Okay, my son prefers comics like that. This is the second construction. Uh, you could choose to use a different, uh, possibly a <laughs> completely different. Wow, my this is freaking out. Uh, you could use a completely different construction, of course. Uh, for example, you could do something like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could have a, an adverbial, uh, a conjunctive adverbial phrase. Uh, for example, on the other hand, okay, all right. So it doesn't have to be a one-word adverbial, a conjunctive adverbial adverb. It could actually be an adverbial phrase like this. This is also perfectly correct. I like books. On the other hand, my son prefers comics. This okay. is a compound sentence as on well. The, on the other hand, is new for me. <laughs> on the, okay. Is it? Uh, okay, well, let me, let me see if I can teach you a little more about that. The, there's an entire construction here which we can... Um, on, for example, here's another way you may say it. Whoops, God. On one hand, you may have uh, the adverbial phrase in the beginning. On one hand, okay. I like books. All right. Now, I, I have a choice. I could actually make this one simple. On one hand, I like books. And then another phrase, on the other hand, my son prefers comics. Or I could actually join the two. I like books. And then con continue, on the other hand. This is a common construction uh, to show um, comparative, to show compares. Um, Contrast, actually, I'm sorry. To show a contrast, two contrasting I ideas, different ideas. I like books, my son prefers comics. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, okay. On the other hand, it's a fairly common thing to show contrast. Whoops. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, Carolina? Yeah. Thomas got the flu, therefore he didn't go to school. Okay. The who got the flu? Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Thomas. Got it. Yeah. Thomas got the flu. Boop. Semicolon. Therefore. Therefore. Comma. He didn't. He didn't go to school. Aha. Uh -huh. Whoops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, okay. Therefore, he didn't go to school. Whoops. All right. Thomas got the flu. Therefore, he didn't go to school. This is a perfect sentence. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Uh, yep. That's exactly how you do it. And that, when you write it, that is how you write it. And actually, I would like to say, Carolina, the way you spoke it was also very good. Your inflection and intonation, as you said, it was Thomas got the flu, therefore he didn't go to school. With the pauses to indicate where the punctuation would be <clears throat> if you were writing it. Thomas got the flu and the kind of rising intonation, rising and falling intonation uh, at the ends before each punctuation. Okay. That was actually very good. Uh, so even though you know you have to worry about the punctuation when you're writing, in a way, you're concerned about it when you're speaking because wherever there's punctuation in writing, there's going to be pausing or inflection changes, changes in pitch, uh, which which would be shown by. Um, the punctuation. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's look at one more. Okay. We all right. We've looked at the the three different styles. Okay. Let's look at what happens here. Okay. Here's an example of what happens when we in this example here. Whoops. Oh, come on, what is with this? Uh, all right. Wow. Uh, it's really messed up, but uh, I love conjunctive adverbs, semicolon. My students love each other, comma, and then I have a connector, and we all love holidays. I love conjunctive adverbs is one sentence. My students love each other is one sentence or one independent clause and we all love holidays another independent clause so sometimes a compound sentence can, can contain more than two independent clauses and this is usually where we would normally see just a naked all by itself semicolon to separate normally again very usually the first two independent clauses. Uh, so let's try that out. Let's let's see if we can do that. All right, I'm gonna go way down here and see if I can get things to work properly here. Okay, so we're gonna try. Uh, basically, we're gonna try to create. Wait a minute. We're going to try to create a uh, three independent clause sentence. All right? An uh, independent clause, and then a semicolon, then an independent clause, which you can, which you can choose to join. Come on, what? Weird. You can use a coordinator. 
uh, uh, fanboys. Okay, you can you can use one of the fanboys. Whoops. God, having problems here. Uh, or whoops. <laughs> wow, really weirding out here. Okay, and then another independent clause with a comma. Or instead of fanboys, you can use uh, you can use an adverbial. All right, ne never mind my crazy notations. So let's see if I can walk you through this and help you. <coughs> We're going to try three independent clauses. In other words, Ludi. All right. Let's give this a try. Ludi, you ready to try this? Ludi, are you there? Uh, okay. Carolina. Okay. I play tennis. My All nephew right. plays soccer and the rest of my family prefer swimming. Okay. All right. Oh, weird. Uh, all right, I think that's going to work. I play tennis, semicolon, whoops, semicolon. I play tennis, all right. What was the rest? I'm sorry. My nephew plays soccer. Mm-hmm. And the rest of my family prefer swimming. Come on. Okay, that's it. Okay, you're using a coordinator here. This is a perfectly normal sentence. This is a perfectly good sentence. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Perfect, Carolina. Very nice. I play tennis, my nephew plays soccer, and the rest of my family prefers swimming. This is how to correctly punctuate and write uh, a compound sentence with three independent clauses. Perfect. Excellent. Gregory? Thank you. you good job. Um, you want to give it a try? Yeah. I have to go to work just now. I am in a in the hurry. Hmm. I have to. Whoops. I have to go to work just now. I am in a hurry. Wait. Okay. Wait for it. Okay. I am in a hurry. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is correct. I could punctuate it with a period here. It's possible to write this this way with two independent clauses, which these are. Um, can you give me another independent clause related to I am in a hurry? I, I have my... My sentence. You do? Well, oh, hang on. Wait a minute. I'm not quite done with uh, Gregory. Gregory's given me two independent clauses. Can you give me another one? Another one? Yeah. I am in a hurry. Uh, what do you mean? Another sentence? Well, no. Uh, I'm trying to... Um, what I'm trying to get you guys to do is give me a compound sentence with three independent clauses you have given me okay, two. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm in a hurry uh, uh, and I, um, I'm in a hurry, I leave the, the class. Uh, okay, let just, I'm going to modify that. You didn't say it, but I'm going to, I just want to, I'm in a hurry. Okay. 
I am leaving the class. So, okay. I am leaving the class. Okay. So I am leaving the class. Uh, okay. All right. That works. I am in a hurry, so I am leaving the class. We still got our coordinator with fanboys here. And we've added a comma, and, and this is perfectly correct. Uh, okay. Uh, Ludi, you're anxious to give me your sentence. Bye bye. Okay, bye, Gregory. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye, Greg. Okay. Uh, my, my computer crashed. My computer crashed. <laughs> oh, that's what happened. Okay. So I lost the connection. Ah, wait. <laughs> wait. And okay. So I lost the connection. Okay. We don't need to have so here. All right. Well, let me write it the way you're saying it. Okay. Mm hmm <laughs> And and you didn't listen. <laughs> uh, uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, wait wait a minute. Alright, there's a couple problems. Uh you don't need this so. Alright. Uh, my computer crashed. I lost the connection. All right, this is this is fine. You don't need to have. Uh, you don't need the coordinator here. Okay. It's actually a little redundant. It's not necessary. Uh, okay. And the second part, and you didn't listen me. No. Um, that's. You have the wrong verb. It's not. It can't. You can't have listen here. Okay. Two. Ah. Uh, okay. You can. All right. You didn't listen to me. Okay. But probably. Uh. Better. To say you didn't hear me. Okay. 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 What is the difference actually between hear and listen? Do you know, Woody? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, there is definitely a difference. All right. Uh, you're in, okay. Um, okay. Do you hear me? Uh, do you hear the? Uh, means the sound of my voice. Can you hear the sound? I hear oh. music. Okay, it means I hear it. Okay, it's making my eardrums vibrate, and there's in that <laughs> that information is going to my brain. That that's basically it. Uh, okay, but I'm listening to music means I'm actively trying to understand it, what I'm hearing. Okay. Okay, so there is definitely a difference between listen and hear. Uh, I'm listening to you means I'm, I'm trying to understand you. Uh, I hear you means I hear your voice, but I don't really care. There can definitely be a meaning there that uh, I don't really care what you're saying. Uh, okay. Um, one more note here. All right, what you something you don't want to do. All right, going back to our punctuation patterns. Uh, all right, independent clause, conjunctive adverb, independent clause. One thing that you are not going to see, which has not yet been mentioned. Um, all right, you guys formed sentences. You guys have got a bunch of sentences here. Uh, with using a uh, coordinator and three independent clauses. Um, look, 
Uh, my computer crashed. All right. One thing you're not going to see uh, is two semicolons in one sentence. So this, don't do this. My computer crashed. Uh, what did you say? My computer crashed. Uh, I lost the connection. You want to avoid this, another semicolon in the same sentence. Therefore, comma, you didn't hear me. All right, avoid this. This is not. Uh, now, you could speak it, but then, um, of course, when you spoke it, I couldn't. I wouldn't know the difference. I, it would sound like this. My computer crashed. I lost the connection, therefore you didn't hear me. When you're writing it as well, this is what it would look like. Do not connect three independent clauses with by um, using two semicolons. Basically, basic rule of thumb, you do not want two semicolons in one sentence when you're writing. Just simply do what I just did. Um, instead of having three semicolons, just remove one of the independent clauses and add a period for punctuation, make it a simple sentence. All right. Uh, definitely you don't want to have you don't want to have two semicolons in one sentence. That's bad juju. Bad to do. Okay. All right. Okay. It is acceptable, however, what you guys did using the connectors. All right, that, that's perfectly, these are perfectly okay. Um, and in fact, uh, in fact, I could actually do more. I could actually do, I could, act, whoops, I could actually add more. Whoops, come on. Oh, what a mess. Oh, crazy. I could actually add a, another. Uh, my computer crashed, I lost connection, and you didn't hear me, comma, so I cried. All right, I could actually add a fourth. As long as I'm using the coordinators, I can keep adding, um, I can keep adding uh, independent clauses. All right, so it would be possible for me to actually add to this. All right, comma, so... I cried. Wah. Okay. Uh, I cried is an independent clause. Right? So I, in this sentence, I have four independent clauses. So in other words, what I'm, the last thing I'm trying to tell you, if you're, you're going to use coordinators, fanboys, you can keep piling on independent clauses. It's possible. Of course, it gets very awkward. You do not want to keep adding 57 independent clauses because that's going to sound ridiculous or look ridiculous in writing. But it's okay to add more, but you can't do it with adverbials, conjunct conjunctive uh, adverbials, adverbs, because you can't really have more than one semicolon. Uh, okay. That's it for uh, compound sentence structure. Tomorrow, complex sentence structure. We're talking about subordinators and subordinate clauses. Yay. So we'll do that tomorrow. Any <laughs> last questions? <laughs> Ladies. No, I don't okay. have questions. Great. Either. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you, Ludi. See you guys again soon, I hope. See you tomorrow or, or even sooner, whatever. All right. Okay. Bye, ladies. Thank you. Have a great day Bye. or a great evening.